The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one furlong to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. A very pleasant good morning racing fans and welcome here to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. On the show today we get to cover big races from two continents. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with the $20 million Sally Cup. Maximum Security headed a huge U.S. contingent against a great global field. We'll have that coming up in our first part. Also, we'll head to Florida for the Grade 2 Fount of View Stakes in the three-year-old debut for the highly regarded Dennis's Moment. Our local race of the week will actually take us up to Aqueduct. We had some locals in the long-distance Bernardini Stakes. And we'll meet trainer Gustavo Chacon, who has an interesting past, to say the least. We'll meet Gus here in just a little bit. Hi, everybody. Keith Jones down with the beautiful first floor here at Parks Racing. Mr. Eclipse winner Dick Girardi. And, Dick, we get the Saudi Cup coming up here in just a couple of mm -hmm. minutes. Well, we started with the Dubai World Cup. We yes. got the Pegasus World Cup. Yes. And now we have this one. Which is the world's richest horse race for the, I don't know, third time now. <laughs> we keep topping it. 20 million for the inaugural Saudi Cup, and no shortage of American-based horses going to try to get the 10 million. It's 50% of the purse right. to the winner, which is still a pretty nice number. <laughs> Dick, maximum security goes over to uh, Riyadh to uh, compete in this one, and looks to be a, a heavy favorite. Yeah, and when I was watching the race, Keith, I was a little confused because he was in the Coolmore silks. Okay. I'd forgotten that Coolmore bought a half interest in this horse. I was looking for Gary and Mary West silks, but yeah, new ownership, uh, same horse, same trainer and Jason service and boy what a neat horse this is he's like a length from being first in every race but all anybody remembers is the race he won and then did he's put it together a pretty serious resume when you no, look at what he has accomplished no so far but well, take some of the other Americans we uh, midnight Bisu goes yep. over yep. and uh, gonna try the boys in a 20 million dollar race yeah the terrific filly who had such a great season until she lost to finish second in the this day of other than that, she was perfect in 2019, and we have uh, the 2018 Pennsylvania Derby winner, McKenzie, who ran second in the Breeders' Cup Classic for Mr. Baffert, who has a tendency to win these races yes, with large yes. purses. Well, speaking of Bobby, he has Mucho Gusto, too, he Dick, does. who uh, ran out the TV in the Pegasus, and yep. the Tacitus, who seems to find ways to lose. Yes, for a talented Bill horse. Yes, is yeah, Billy no. Mott. So, really, it's some a, great It's a really Americans. good group, and there's some world horses, too, but as I looked at them, I'm going, I don't think so. Yeah. Not on dirt, <laughs> not against this field of Americans. Well, Dick, this is $20 million. It's yes. a mile and an eighth. Yes. It's around one turn. Yeah, the long, sweeping, yes. Saudi course. Yes. Uh, yeah, it must be nice to have those kind of racetracks. Like, I think it was, it's compared in circumference to Belmont Park. Right. That's what people yep. thought of it, so we'll see. Well, maximum security, heavy favorite to win the 50% of that $20 million mm -hmm. purse. Here's the call of the inaugural running of the $20 million Saudi Cup. Flag is raised by the starter, and they're off and racing for the inaugural Saudi Cup. Bit slow away on the inside, Gold Dream jumping out alertly. Mucho Gusto is swift on the speed, and Maximum Security is sent forward as well. Magic One not too far away, and here is North America up the inside. So it's North America, Mucho Gusto in the black cap, and Capizzano out wide as they race through the first couple of hundred meters, and now join the race course proper. They're being tracked through in fourth place towards the inside by Ben Battle, uh, pushed along to try and keep in touch with the speed. At this stage is Gronkowski for Frankie de Tori in fifth. Magic Wand is in sixth. At this stage, McKinsey is racing in midfield in seventh or eighth place alongside Tacitus as they make their way down the back straight. Midnight Bisu quite well back with MJ Jack as the pace just begins to steady down. Gold Dream is also towards the tail of the field. So out in front, Mucho Gusto in the black cap presses on with things. On the running rail, Capizano for Mikel Barcelona. In third on the outside, maximum security being ridden along. North America comes next. Magic Wand and Ben Battle flank Gronkowski. Then just behind these, Chris Abarrell trying to improve. Midnight Bisu is a long way back, sticking to the inside at the moment. Tacitus the Grey is making good progress now as Mucho Gusto leads them with 500 to run. And out in front, Mucho Gusto turns for home in the Saudi Cup, being pursued by maximum security. Then Ben Battle is in third place. Gold Dream is staying on. Then Tacitus and Magic Wand. Mucho Gusto has the lead for Bob Baffert, leading by 
by a couple of legs. Ben Battle, Gold Dream, all the time. Midnight Bisu running on strongly up the inside running rail. And now trying to challenge maximum security as well. Mucho Gusto clinging to the lead. Maximum security and Midnight Bisu closing. Midnight Security on the inside. Maximum security has the lead. Narrowly from Midnight Bisu. Maximum security is the winner of the inaugural Saudi Cup. Well, Dick, it was all about the Americans turning into that long stretch. Dick, it's Mucho Gusto with Irad Ortiz on board. And what's he doing? Is he playing bumper cars here? He's trying to drift maximum out. security. Drift out, drift in. He's drifted all over the place. But the maximum security would not be intimidated, Dick. He runs from off the pace. And Jason Service said all along, he doesn't need the lead. He can run from off the pace. And he did here. He rallies to get the dot here and picks up another $10 million in his pocket. Dick Midnight Bisu comes on to finish second. So yep. a terrific effort for her. But Dick, maximum security. Is he the world's best horse now? I think he is. He's some brace horse. He's just tough. When he gets to the lead, you can't go by him. And he showed a, another dimension here because he was chasing the whole way. And you're thinking, boy, can he get there? Can he get there? And then when the race was there to be won, maximum security does what he does best. Finished first. Now keep in mind, he's finished first in every race but one when he missed the break in that race at Monmouth Park where he was clearly the best horse. So he could be undefeated. Or he couldn't be because right. he got DQ'd obviously right. out of the Derby. But yeah, if there was, uh, I don't know, revenge maybe isn't the right word, but certainly retribution, you feel like, hey, you, you didn't win the Derby, uh, but this one's a heck of a nice consolation prize for $10 million. Well, I know John Service was very happy for Jason. We, we all were. Yeah. Uh, look, Jason's a terrific guy, and he's a great trainer, and uh, now I think the rest of the world knows it. Well, look at, let's get some more here from the Saudi Cup and the winners. I was following the speed. I know they're going to be a lot of speed special from that horse. And we came to a stretch. He wanna come, he wanna fight, but the guy in front was carrying me out, so I got not much room, so I had to pick his eye, and he, he did the rest. It was exhilarating to watch. Oh, what was it like to ride? Oh my God, it was amazing. Long straight here. It was wonderful. And for you, this horse is proving himself oh, after this, this better and better. You know what, this is, I know this is something that I proved they got hard for me, for him. From the Kentucky Derby, we, you know, but uh, I know it was because he has something better for us. And for you to win the inaugural Saudi Cup. Oh, that was amazing. Unbelievable. I, I can't fit in this body right now. Have a horse like this. Does this feel like the absolute lifetime experience for you as a trainer? I'd have to say uh, for sure, without a doubt. I mean, I'm, for, for, for me it is. For me. And again, our congratulations to those guys on just a huge victory, Dick. And right now, we're really not sure what's next for Max. Yeah, Jason was saying probably no Dubai World Cup because he didn't eat up after the race. He lost a little bit of weight. That was a hard, hard race. And right. Jason's done a great job of spacing Maximum Security's races. And it's really unfortunate we didn't get to see him here in the PA Derby. They wanted to run. Of course, that's right. when he got really sick with the colic. But he's back. He's all the way back. Well, Dick, we head to our first break. We got back here on Let's Go Racing. We're going to be trader Gustavo Chacon at our local race of the week goes up to Aqueduct. Dick, am I really going to say this? U Uriah St. Louis was favored? He's two to one. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> and wait till you see this finish. We'll be back with that after this. It's another five or six lengths. Back to Adventist, who has a lot to do here as the field reaches the back stretch. Racehorses are pampered. Treated with care and loved. Nothing is more important than their health and their safety. We do right by them. And they do right by us. The hardworking folks who proudly earn our living. In Pennsylvania's horse racing. And breeding industries. Horse racing is a lot of fun. But it's so much more. It provides tens of thousands of jobs. 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 And billions in economic impact each year. All across the Commonwealth. Horse racing in Pennsylvania. It's a winner. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Pewter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the Mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. What does Chapman's seven locations and 10 car brands mean to you? It means a huge selection of quality pre-owned vehicles, all makes and models, many one owner low mileage certified with miles of factory warranty remaining. Safety checked, meticulously detailed, and each come with a free Carfax report so you can buy with complete confidence at any Chapman Auto store near you or shop online anytime at ChapmanPreOwned.com. 
If our emblem is not on your car or truck, you probably did pay too much. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. It's time for our special feature segment this week. And, Dick, you have an article on the uh, Let's yep. Go Racing, Let's Go Racing Parks.com website about Trader Gustavo Chacon. Yeah, I hadn't met Gustavo before. He's a native of Guatemala. He's been here for 30 years. First started under John Sadler uh -huh. out in Southern California, eventually worked his way east and worked for Derek Ryan. Remember Derek yep. when he was here? When he had Musket Man in the 2009 Derby, won by Mind That Bird. Right. And Gus talks about the walkover to the Derby, how exciting that was. He was the assistant trainer. And Musket Man ran third that day at 19 right. to one. Then he ran third behind Rachel and Mind That Bird in the Preakness. He was a really good right. horse. Now Gus has horses on his own, including some E.T.'s Gypsy Woman, yes. who I know you, you've you called here. And it's just a really neat story. He's a good guy. And uh, I, I know we were over there chatting with him. Well, let's take a minute and meet Gus Chico. Where originally are you from, and how did you fall in love with the horses and get to get to the racetrack originally working for Derek Ryan? Well, uh, I came from Guatemala back in 1989. Um, I was I came to Los Angeles where my mom lives and with my brothers and my sister, and um, that's where I met my wife back in '92. And she says she wanted to work with horses, so she asked me to take it to Santa Anita Park. And we went up there, and both of us got a job with Mr. John Sadler. I didn't, I didn't know anything about horses back then oh, yet. Uh, but I was just, I was just like very green, but you know, it was, it was a nice experience though. And we worked, we worked for a few months, and then we decided to come to Pennsylvania. Gus, you've had an amazing experience. You were assistant trainer to Derek Ryan the year that Kentucky Derby year that Mind That Bird won with Musket Man. Tell us about the walkover and that, that excitement. That's one of the experiences that everybody wants to have. I think uh, it, it was one of the dreams coming true. It's like being the Super Bowl, yeah. being the biggest thing do you ever think when you are into the horses business and uh, mr ryan gave me the opportunity to be with him and the and the derby i was an assistant trainer for him and uh, the horse ran amazing and you know we trained him really good and he did amazing and, and i was so happy to be there around that time what a great experience it was well thank you so much for sharing all this with us and uh it was great to learn more about you gus thanks thank you very much well, Dick, uh, Gus has been around here for a few years, yep. and uh, you mentioned that E.T.'s Gypsy Woman. Looks like he's got a pretty talented young filly in his uh, No question, right now. and I, he knows what to do with him. He doesn't have a lot of horses, but he's, he's yep. really good at what he does. And in addition to the story about Gus, uh, the story on Jamie Ness, who won his 3,000th yep. race there a couple weeks ago, is up. And what the amazing thing about Jamie, took him 30 races to win one, <laughs> and you'll hear it, he's, he's talking about it. It's like he just wanted to win one race. Now, 20 years later, he's won 3,000. 3, it's an amazing story. Dick, let's get to some more racing coverage. It's brought to you by Chapman Auto Group. Unless our emblem is on the back of your car or truck, you probably paid too much. And one of those times, we're going to take some license with yes, our local indeed. race of the week and go instead up to Aqueduct for the Bernardini Stakes. Dick, how about one mile and five sixteenths? Right up our man Uriah <laughs> St. Louis's alley. He's the only one that trains these horses to right. keep running forever. Dick, he has Adventist in here, and he is two to one, and he is favored. Dick, when's the last time we had a race with Uriah where he was not 30 to 1, he's favored. Well, the last time he won was here on the 5th of October in the Greenwood Cup. Right. He was 50 to 1. Yeah. And, and it, it's another great story because he's done a great job with this horse. Keith, I had to look back. In what going way back when to a couple of years, uh -huh. 2016, this horse was third to Gotham, third to Wood, fourth in the Peter Pan, and second in the Ohio Derby. And then he was down to being claimed for 10, and it was, it was nothing was going right. Uriah took over, and little by little, he's built this horse back up, and he's won some big yeah. races already. And he's trying to win another. He's earned over $600,000 so far. The second choice, number six, Latoni, is two to one, and Dick, we expect him to be forwardly placed. You would think so. We do not expect Uriah to be forwardly placed. No. As you watch this, there will be times you can't see this horse at all. <laughs> the Bernardini, here's the call. It's another five or six lengths. Back to Adventist, who has a lot to do here as the field reaches the back stretch. Still a long way to go. Ektabar is the leader here by almost two with Laytoni tracking in second, and on the outside is Bluegrass Cat Smile in third. It's three lengths to Dynamax Prime. In between horses there is Armament. Heavy rollers on the outside. A half dozen lengths back to Adventist as the field continues up the back stretch. 
Ectobar challenged here by Leitoni. Leitoni has a head in front. Ectobar is down at the rail. Bluegrass Cat Smile is on the outside as they begin the run into the far turn, and it's three of them across. Leitoni in between. Bluegrass Cat Smile on the outside. Ectobar down at the rail. Three and a half lengths to a Dynamax Prime who's racing in four. Then Heavy Roller. Adventist begins to pick it up now. Has moved it to sixth. And the uh, trailer is Armament. As the field comes for the top of the stretch, Ectobar has dropped out of it. It's Leitoni and Bluegrass Cat Smile. Adventist continues to move on the extreme outside as the field comes into the stretch. It is Bluegrass Cat Smile and Leitoni. Adventist is now in third with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Bluegrass Cat Smile is in front. On the outside, Adventist, a 16th to the finish. Bluegrass Cat Smile trying to hang in there. Adventist with one last charge, and Adventist has the momentum and is going to win the Bernardini. Dick, as you mentioned, Adventist was kind of like in another area code <laughs> back there on the back right. stretch, but John Basoto perfectly timed. Yes, he he knows what he's doing. He, does. he starts running as they head to the far turn, and here comes Adventist. He sustains his momentum all the way down to the finish and gets up to win, pays $6.40. Dick, one of the things I think is we talk about these long distance yeah. races, how speed is important because yeah. you really don't want to get so far behind. That's how right. do you sustain a run from so far behind? But Adventist does it. Our congratulations to you, Ryan. Yeah, and what he, he's so great with these older horses. This horse is now seven. They need some kind of different kind of a care because they've obviously run a lot. This was the horse's 47th lifetime right. race. And hey, congratulations to Ryan and his crew. They did a great job. And, and they'll find the right races for them, these long yeah. distance races. And there's enough of them up in New York. And hey, there's the Greenwood guy. Yeah, I was going to say. He's... Come back. And, he won't be 50 no, he won't. this time. Not this time. Dick, let's go to Florida. Our other big national race this week is one of the big derby preps. It's the Great Two Fountain of Youth Stakes. They'll go one mile with one sixteenth. And uh, Dick, 50 derby points to the winner. So you win this. You're, you're in. in. You're yep. in. That's right. Uh, the favorite here is number five, Dennis's moment. He gets bet down to six to five for Dale Romans. <laughs> Dick, he's kind of interested because he yes. has had serious trouble in two races yep. and he's looked tremendous in the other two. So the jockey falls off in the first race, right. then he wins by 19, wins by a length of three quarter, runs big buyers, big enough that he's four to five in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and then he completely misses the break and it's a complete disaster. So you know he can run if he gets out of the yeah. gate, or at least you think he yeah. can run if he gets out of the gate for our man Dale Romans, who's never been as high on a three-year-old as he is on the And he's the son of Tiz now against six to five. The second choice at number six, as seen on TV, he's five to two for trader Kelly Breen. It's his first time around two turns, but Dickie ran tremendous when he was in the Bucho Macho Man last he time. He did. He got a 98 buyer. He was second to chance it. It was a very late scratch in here mm -hmm. by Safi Joseph because he hated the post. He was in post 12. He said, we're, we're waiting, even though it's our home track, running the Tampa Bay Derby the next week. So, yeah, as seen on TV, and, and Kelly, this is a pretty good horse. Six to five, Dennis is moving. Here's the call. Ette Indian in front from the outset, leads a half a length. Liam's Lucky Charm moves three wide, gear jockeys in the two path. As seen on TV, gets the hurry up to keep up with these top horses. A length and a half better than Shotsky. Down at the inside in Master Day. Then on the outside to Candy Tycoon. Dennis's moment is not picking up his feet at all. Dennis's moment is backpedaling. He's now back second last. The Falcon is last with less than a quarter of a mile to go. Ette Indian with enterprising tactics from the outset, and he's still well clear. Ette Indian and Florent Drew into the short stretch on top. Long shot Master Day cuts the corner to try to get a slice. Shotsky down the center with as seen on TV. Inside the final 16th of the phasing Tipton Fountain of Youth, and it's all about Bian Cone. It's all about Ette Indian, who wins stylishly by six or seven. Well, Dick, you mentioned the chance at scratch because yes. he didn't like that outside post, the short run to the first turn at yep. one mile and one sixteenth. So that leaves Ette Indian on the outside. And all that Florent Giroux does, Jake, is go right to the front, yep. doesn't look back for Patrick B. and Crone, runs a big one at three to one, wins by eight and a half lengths, pays eight dollars and sixty cents to win. And Dick Dennis's moment finished last. Yeah, well, let's talk about Dennis's moment first. That was last with, at this point anyway, no apparent excuse. He just had no run. He was in the middle of the pack. He never looked good at all. Asked at the three eights had nothing. I don't know what's up with that, but that I feel bad for Dale because he, he really wanted that. Off his two-year-old form on the right, right day, he was as good as any, but that was, I don't know you're coming back from them unless they come up with something. Ette Indian loose in the lead. I love how Florent Giroux rides anyway. Right. I love the tactics. I was a little surprised they were able to beat all that other speed so easily to the front, but nobody else went. They yeah. said, we're going, yeah. and they were gone. But one of the things that happens with these 
the way they prep these horses for the derby, mm -hmm. they run so infrequently. Yep. You know, here, Dennis's moment stubs his toe, yep. and you, you don't get any points. Yep. You don't get any points, you're not going to get in. No, I mean, he's got to win the Florida Derby to get in, and did, that, did he show you like he could win anything <laughs> off of that race? Right. I mean, that was just bad. Again, hopefully, I, we were talking about this before the show, the last really good horse, and the Fleet Alex is a way more prominent right. horse than, uh, than Dennis's moment at this point, to run so bad as a three-year-old and then come back was a Fleet Alex. Right. But every Tim Ritchie told everybody, look, he has a lung infection. Nobody believed him because nobody believes anything that anybody says <laughs> at the racetrack. Well, he was telling the truth, right. as the Fleet right. Alex proved when he won the Arkansas Derby. And, Tough trip third of the Derby and crushed him in the previous yeah. Belmont. Dick, the uh, big race on Saturday, Gulfstream for the handicapped horses with the Gulfstream Park Mile, the one turn mile, a grade two race, a really competitive field here. Looked like it had a ton of speed in other races, looked like it had a lot of speed. Number nine, Mr. Freeze is the five to two favorite here. Uh, and Dick, his last two races were in grade one races. Didn't win either of them, but he performed better than his odds would indicate. Yeah, and he was second in the Pegasus to Mucho Gusto, who we just saw run really well over in Saudi Arabia. So that form looks pretty right. good right now. Another one trained by Dale Romans. The second choice, Dick, I was a little surprised. Number one, Bodie Express is yep. the second choice here at 7-2. to two. You look back through his lines, do we remember that he was second to maximum security at 71-1 to one at the Florida Derby? I remember, because I was playing a pick six, and I had him in my pick six. I wanted him to win. But yeah, no, we do remember that. And of course, then he was most famous for being the runoff horse right. in the Preakness, where he's running around without a rider. Right. Well, let's get to the grade two Gulfstream Park Mile. Here's the goal. Bodie Express and Jaramillo in front by a neck. Rare form keeps the pressure on second. Mr. Freeze a three wide third. Two and a half to True Timber, who's now fourth forevermo at the inside fifth. Followed six by Hog Creek Hustle, then Fat Man seventh. Dropping back to eighth is Hakal. Ninth is Zenden. Tenth is Duchere. And Expert is 11th and last behind a 45 and one opening half mile. These top three have done each other no favors as Mr. Freeze bids up three wide. From fourth, Hog Creek Hustle begins to get a move on for Gaffleone. He'll tip to the far outside to try to track down the trio, and the fat man is underway for Castellano. He's five wide. There's a quarter of a mile left to go. Mr. Freeze has ran to the top and leads by two. Hog Creek Hustle and Fat Man are stretch dangers. Long shot Forever Mo tries to get a slice, and they twirl for home. 109 and four for three quarters with an eighth of a mile to go. Mr. Freeze is strong up front, and he leads by three. Fat Man is second. Back to third, Hog Creek Hustle, but they couldn't stay with Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze, Manny Franco, and Dale Romans win the goal stream mile by two. Well, Mr. Freeze coming out of those two grade one races gets that perfect stalking trip on the outside, tracks the speed, and then ends up drawing off to win by three. Pays seven dollars and forty cents to win. Number three, if I can turn my page, good old <laughs> Fat Man. You gotta yep. love Fat, fat Man was second. Man. Hog, Hog Creek Hustle was third. Like Mr. Freeze has turned into a pretty good handicap horse. Yeah, over well over a million now. Uh, five out of twelve lifetime, but the right five for. Uh, for Dale Romans, and you know he ran in the PA Derby yeah, against yeah, McKenzie, mention that. Yep. ninth, eighth by 25 that day, uh, and then seventh by 33. But since then he's been really good, and he won the West yeah. Virginia Derby. So good horse, and uh, Dale's got him at his tops right well, now. Dale wins that one, but then does comes out a couple races. I think races if he later. had a choice yes. in which yeah. one, he would have taken the other. Let's get to our next break. We come back here on Let's Go Racing, our jockey and trader of the week. Gee, who might they be <laughs> this week? We'll be back with more after this. Turning for Home is a nonprofit that has provided nearly 2,800 former racehorses with a safe retirement. The program was created through the foresight of the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. We all love animals, and to give back to something that helps us so much, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. Responding to the need for a better system that addressed the uncertain future for the retiring equine population at Parks Racing, the PTHA rallied horsemen to support the program. These horses can do anything from hunter jump to Western to therapeutic riding. Turning for Home became the first on-track retirement program at our year-round racetrack. We want to make sure that our horses that have run so well for us over the years get the great opportunity to get a new vocation. Out of everything that we've done in Pennsylvania for racing, I think that's the thing we can be most proud of. If you would like to help these amazing animals find a great second career and forever home, please give us a call or contact us at turningforhome.org.
Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Got to give out those weekly awards brought to you by the terrific Turning for Home program, the best in the nation retirement program. No Log on to their website at turningforhome.org. Dick, it's hands down. Our man John Basoto, terrific ride at yep. Uriah St. Louis, getting Adventist ready for a stakes victory. Jockey Easy and call. trainer of the week. You got it. Let's get to race recap. Race recap is brought to you by Pewter Stable. Log on to their website at peterstable.com and become an owner. Not yesterday, do it today <laughs> at peterstable.com. Back down to Gulf Stream Park for their big day. Let's take a look at the three year old fillies of the great two Devon and Dale. A one mile, $200,000 race. Did great matchup here. Number six, Spice is nice. Three to five for trader Todd Pletcher. Ran terrific in her debut. And undefeated totalist Shape, uh, who is two to one for Safi Joseph Jr. Yeah, and it was just about who got. Got the lead again, and uh, Tonal of Shape got it. Spice is nice. Looked like she was going to go by, and then looked like she was going to fade out of the picture. Yeah, Kept came trying. Again. Yep. Yeah, Tonal of Shape was good. 87 buyer. I thought Spice is nice for her first stakes race was good too. Yeah, Tonal of Shape is now five for five. She pays six dollars and twenty cents to win kick eye on racing. It is a big weekend, coast to coast. What we got? Probably the biggest race for us is the Gotham uh, with mischievous Alex, uh -huh. with Cassius King and Glenn Bennett and the crew, and Keith Jones. And Keith Jones the is in for five percent. Yeah. Now not this Keith Jones. He wishes he was for John Service, and we saw him last win the swale and just crush the field. And a new rider for this race is our man Kendrick Carmen. How good uh, is that? And we'll see how he does in the, in the Gotham. John told me he thinks he's more of a miler, but let's see what happens. Right. And right now they're not thinking Derby, but you know you can get Derby fever if you want another one of those. We've got the San Felipe out yep. on the West Coast. Tampa we have the Bay Tampa Derby. Bay Derby and yep. the big cap on the West Coast. So it's just a huge weekend. It's getting to that point of the year. We're getting to mid March and uh, all things yeah. are early March. All things are possible here. Guess where you can bet all those races? Right here yeah. at Park. You come out and enjoy the day. <laughs> and great action, coast to coast. Enjoy it right here. We'll be back with news and notes after this. Did you know the Pennsylvania horse racing industry spends tens of millions of dollars supporting agriculture? From local farmers and farm workers to veterinarians and more. And we do it with zero tax dollars while creating tens of thousands of jobs. Did you know the Pennsylvania horse racing industry provides health care and pensions for thousands of workers who in turn spend their income supporting local communities? And we do it with zero tax dollars while creating tens of thousands of jobs. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. It's news and notes. We love news and notes. It's yes, brought to you by the Granny Fund. Log on and get involved with the Granny Fund continued education on the back stretch. She's Bruce Casella, Dick Girardi, Keith Jones, and Dick, one of the uh, jockeys that went over to yes. Saudi Arabia and competed over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And with the Saudi Cup and all was Mike Smith. Yes. Well, Dick, Mike's wallet is a little bit lighter this week. Yeah, they said excessive whipping, yes. which over here might get you a, a couple of days right. or a little small fine. How about two hundred thousand? Two hundred thousand. I wonder. I wonder if Mike doesn't pay it and never goes back to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> what will happen to him? Extradition and yeah. stuff like that. Dude. Wow. He they're also, not playing around. He, he also got fined for forgetting to weigh in after a race on Friday night. It's like Mike. Yeah. What, what are you doing? Well, yeah, that part I don't get. But yeah. I, hey. Hey. It's a different world over there in the Middle East. <laughs> 200,000. Ouch. Yeah, really. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's edition of Let's Go Racing. Come out and enjoy the action and the simulcasting right here with us, and we will see you next week on Let's Go Racing.